40 years old. This evening is a special evening. That we honored the Tyler Prize for 70 years of providing service in the fields of environmental accomplishment. And you are part of the party tonight. We hope you'll enjoy the party with us. In addition to celebrating the party, of course, we are here to honor the 2013 Tyler recipient, Dr. Diana Wall, who will be speaking to you later. I'm Owen Lind, and it's my privilege to chair the executive committee of the Tyler Prize, basically your host for the dinner tonight, I guess. Foul air, rancid and rotten rivers, denuded forests. That was pretty well accepted as the way life was in the 1950s and the 1960s as the US economy was booming in the post-war period. But in the second half of the 1960s, citizens became aware that something was amiss and they became awakened to the environmental degradation that was all around them. The citizen concern was really encapsulated in the early 1970s with the establishment of what? Earth Day. Earth Day. So come up with your history here now. 1970s, Earth Day was the first reflection of the citizens saying, we've had enough of this. 1972, other nations collectively joined together and we had for the first time the United Nations Conference on the Human Environment in Stockholm. 72. In 73, we have John Alice Tyler saying, this is enough. We need to recognize people who are doing the work that is going to solve these problems. And in 1973, the Tyler Prize was established. Thus, our 40th year anniversary. The first awards that were given that first year were spread across a group of fields that pretty well encapsulated what the future of environmental interest would be and the interest of the Tyler Prize Committee and the Tyler Prize itself. The recipients that very first year recognized G. Evelyn Hutchinson for fundamental theoretical ecology. The basis for solving environmental problems rests in having adequate and sound data brought about by fundamental ecology. Also that first year we recognized the person who demonstrated the application of knowledge to solving problems, and certainly very important in California, Ari Hagenschmidt, the person who led to the work for the improvement of the California's severe problems of smog in Los Angeles. In those early years of the Tyler Prize, those of us who would fly in to Los Angeles occasionally would be told that we're making an instrument approach at two o'clock in the afternoon. That's, that's no lie, that's a fact. That was that bad. Ha Ari Hagenschmidt led to the, the research led to the nature of what that smog was and therefore the cleaning it up. And also that first year, the third person was the person who reflects our another major area of the Tyler Prize, policy, in this case international policy, and the recognition of Maurice Strong for his work with the United Nations Environmental Program. So the Tyler Prize started off on a good footing. And in subsequent 40 years, we have honored 71 individuals or organizations who have followed in this same mode. Many changes in our society that have affected your lives, and that now are really accepted as normal, have come about because of the work of the Tyler recipients over these years. You may not think about these things, but next time you pull in to fill up your car and recognize that you're using unleaded gasoline is a product of the work of a Tyler Prize laureate. The fact that we no longer have leaded paint in our schools is the result of the work of a Tyler Prize laureate. The fact that you no longer are allowed to have indoor smoking is really heavily brought about because of the work of a Tyler Prize laureate. The fact that we have secondary wastewater treatment. You don't like to talk, talk about sewage at a dinner, but basically that's fundamental <laughs> what it is. The fact that we have secondary wastewater treatment is the work of a Tyler laureate. The fact that you have catalytic converters on your automobiles, the work of a Tyler laureate. 
The fact that your hairsprays no longer have harmful propellants that destroy the ozone layer. Tyler Laureates. The fact that you no longer have phosphorus in your detergents leading to green lakes, the work of Tyler Laureates. The Tyler Prize has recognized outstanding people who have performed outstanding feats in their science, in their technology, and in their policy. And therefore, we take a certain amount of pride in what has been accomplished. So tonight is a little bit of pack, patting ourselves on the back for what has been accomplished. 1973, John Tyler, in deciding to put together this prize, contacted the presidents of seven major universities to form an executive committee that would be the responsible committee for selecting the recipients and managing the prize. These universities were, in alphabetical order, Auburn University, Baylor University, Harvard University, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Purdue University, the Scripps Institution of Oceanography, and the University of Southern California. Forty years has seen a lot of diversification in the Tyler Prize Committee since that time. Those first committees were made up of individuals from those seven universities, in most cases provosts and vice presidents, and in a few cases ordinary professors, like standing in front of you, uh, who have been there from the beginning. And over the years, we have diversified this committee greatly. And so I want to introduce you to, to the executive committee of the Tyler Prize so that you can recognize the accomplishments that these people are doing when they put forth the exceptional amount of effort to review the nominations and seek information and validate information, ultimately culminating in the prize being awarded to the outstanding environmental person for that particular year. So I'm going to call the names of the committee and ask them to stand and just remain standing and please ho hold your applause so we don't take excessive amounts of time. And when they're all on their feet, then we can thank them for the excellent work that the executive committees does. Rosina Bierbaum, professor of natural resources and environmental policy at the University of Michigan. I'm assuming Rosina's out there. The, the light is very bright. <laughs> Margaret Catley Carlson, Order of Canada, Secretary General of the Advisory Committee on Water for the International Food Policy Research Institute out of Vancouver, Canada. Alan Kovich, Professor of the Odom School of Ecology at the University of Georgia. And I must comment that the Odom School, of course, commemorates another Tyler recipient, Eugene Odom, who was undoubtedly the foremost environmental educator of the period, and he was recognized for establishing environmental education as a very valid discipline from the Odom School now at Georgia. Uh, Robert Frosch, who's Senior Research Associate at the John F. Kennedy School of Government at Harvard University. <coughs> Julia Martin Lefebvre, Director General of the International Union for the Conservation of Nature out of Gland, Switzerland. Jonathan Patz, Professor and Director of the Global Health Institute at the University of Wisconsin. Cornelius Sullivan, Professor of Biological Sciences at the University of Southern California. Ralph Mitchell, who has been with us from the beginning. Ralph is the other old timer, really old timer on the committee. <laughs> and Ralph has decided he's had enough of us and he's going to retire after this year. We appreciate the years Ralph has given to us very important individual on this committee. <laughs> Two of our members are, can't be with us because of, of health problems. Arturo Gomez Pampa, who's university professor emeritus at the University of California, Riverside, and also the Universidad Veracruzana in Mexico, is unable to be with us this evening and Dr. Judy McDowell, who's a senior scientist at the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, is no longer, uh, could not be with us because of health concerns, but we appreciate their fine work as well. In addition, I'd like to introduce two more people here. We have with us tonight, because we're in the back east, two people who we normally don't get to, to see too often, the widows of two of our fine committee members who have served for years, Judy Rosenblith, Walter Rosenblith was a member of the original group representing MIT. Judy, are you somewhere back there? Over here, Judy. 
We're so delighted that you could be here and represent MIT as one of the original founding universities here in Walter's behalf. And Kay Sullivan, Robert Sullivan, who was very effective as serving in my position here as chair of the executive committee for a good number of years. Kay? Over here, Kay, we're so delighted that you could be here and we appreciate that. We also have with us this evening two former administrators from University of Southern California who were responsible for keeping this prize on track. Dr. Jerome Walker, over here, and Ms. Sue Anderson. Back over here. Let's thank all these people that have given so much to the prize. Thank you all. We have another group with us this evening I want to recognize. Alice Tyler had a very broad vision, and not just on the environment, as important as that was. Uh, she uh, established the Tyler Perpetual Trust, and this is a group that recognizes the diversity of Alice's philanthropic interests, a variety of different interests that she had that are funded by the Tyler Trust, and the members of that trust are always with us for these dinners. And we appreciate seeing them every year. I'm gonna ask them to stand as I call their names, and if you'd hold the applause till they're all uh, on their feet too, please. Martha Apello, Alan Brown, Anders Brown, Courtney Brown, John Hogg, Paul Barber, Nancy Sharp. Thank you. We appreciate the fine work you're doing for the Come Far Forgiveness of Alice. Now, also of special recognition this evening are the attendance here of several past Tyler laureates. We certainly want to recognize these laureates. So again, will you stand until we've called and gone through the list for everybody? Richard Alley. Richard, I haven't seen you this evening. You know, back over here. John Holden, has John made it yet? Yes, very good. Thomas Lovejoy, Mario Molina. There's Mario over there, all right. Stuart Pym. Have I missed anybody who's come in that I didn't get on the checklist? Let's, let's recognize these <laughs> former laureates. Also, we have several other, in, obviously in Washington, you're always gonna have many distinguished people attending these, and you don't know exactly where to draw the line. <laughs> so arbitrarily, <laughs> I've drawn a line. Let's recognize some others who are here and certainly worthy of rec special recognition because of their involvement in the areas of science and the environment and the kind of work we're trying to do. The, from the American Association for the Advancement of Science, the Chief Executive Officer, Alan Leshner. <laughs> Representing one of the original founding universities of which, of course, MIT is still recognized by Judy. Harvard is still here recognized by Ralph. We have, you'll be meeting a representative from USC later, and Baylor is the fourth of the four remaining of the universities who still have members participating, is the first lady of Baylor University, Mrs. Alice Starr. <laughs> from, the, from Colorado, we have Colorado State University, the home of tonight's uh, academic home, I should say, the President, Tony Frank. <laughs> From the United States Supreme Court, Justice Sonia Sotomayor. and the Honorable Jack Gibbons, who is Science and Technology Advisor to President Clinton. You 
you've heard enough of me, it's now time to think about the serious work of eating for a bit. <laughs> the waiters will take your orders. <laughs> Didn't want you sitting out there with that your glass is full. It's, it is now my privilege to introduce Dr. Donald Monahan, who is going to be addressing you and giving you greetings from our administrative body, the University of Southern California, and representing, as I say, one of the original founding universities. Donald? Thank you, everybody. Uh, I, on behalf of the University of Southern California, of course, welcome you here. Um, it's been such an honor and a privilege for USC to be involved with supporting this incredible prize for many, many, many decades. Uh, the university has played a role in providing so much of the administrative support for, to the Tyler Committee and helping move forward this incredible prize. When you think of it, as Owen so well said, when this started, it was a tiny idea to, to where it is today with all of the impacts globally. And, and no one better, if I may comment as a scientist, I'm a professor of biological sciences and I'm also a dean of students at the university, so I'm on both sides of the world of universities between teaching and research. And in 2013, to have Diana Wall with us here this evening is, for me, a, a professional pleasure, but also a personal one. I've known her for 25 years. We worked together in Antarctica for decades. I know her as a professor. I, I cite her work on the study of soils to thousands and thousands of students who take courses with me in biology. And if I were to leave you all with a, a single phrase as to why her work is so important, and you'll hear lots more about this as she's introduced later, it's very simple. Look at your plate right now. What are you eating? What do we eat as a society? How do we support the diets of seven billion people and growing on the planet? It comes from our soil. We like to think of it as muck and dirt, perhaps, in some terms, but it's soil. And the diversity of life in that soil is what keeps us alive as a society. And that's the core discovery of what Diana has done with her life. Hundreds of papers have been published, but if you know just that simple phrase, that soil is human sustainability. It has been for thousands and thousands of years. And how honored I am when I read that she was awarded the Tyler Laurie Prize, I went, wow, how fantastic. Because it's the hidden world. It's the world we take for granted, and I'm sure she'll make some comments on that in a few moments. In her lecture today, she made a comment that I would like to expand on a little bit personally. She showed a picture of herself standing in Antarctica at a very important place. It's called the Beardmore Glacier. And for the Antarcticans, I know there's many of you in the audience uh, from Ant who have worked and support Antarctic science, you will know that this was the route to the South Pole when Shackleton went up that route in 1908, 1909. And it's the route to this day that we get to the South Pole. So it was very exciting in 2010 when Diana was going up there to do some studies. Now, I was on the ice that year. And here's my little personal story. Diana and I were both sick. We get something called the McMurdo crud. That's a little inside thing which says, I've got a cold. And you're coughing and hacking and coughing and hacking. So we were both in the medical area together. And Diana said, I'm going up to the Beardmore Glacier, Donald, next, but I'm really sick. My throat is sore. And I said to her, I have a whole box of these. And I brought some with me, throat lozenges. <laughs> These came back from Antarctica with me, but the other half of a big box, I do remember, I gave them to you in the medical tent and said, you can take mine. And it just reminded me of the comradeship that scientists have in Antarctica and how for 20 or 30 years, we were office mates, right? We were just down the hall together. And, and she's an inspiration to so many scientists for what she's done. Not only just in her own work, but her contributions have been huge. President of the American Ecological Society, chair of the societies of so many different body bodies that have a role in policy in terms of the National Science Foundation, the National Research Council, internationally with UNESCO. I mean, you've dotted every I and crossed every T in your career. And she is the sole winner, folks the sole winner of this year's prize. That is a huge deal, and I've been coming to these things for about 20 years. <laughs> That's a huge deal. 
So in conclusion, I just want to say on behalf of the university how proud we are to have helped make this event happen today by providing administrative support to the great Tyler Executive Committee. And personally, as a scientist and a friend of Diana, how thrilled I am to be able to say congratulations on behalf of all of us as the 2013 winner. Thank you so much. sure your mic was on. Is it on now? Okay, my first piece of advice to you sounds like being a good Jewish mother. Eat. <laughs> this is going to go on for a while, so therefore uh, you should, you know, you should eat already. So uh, I'm Margaret Catley Carlson. Yeah, you don't have to be noisy and eat. You've got to listen to me, but you should eat. <laughs> I'm Margaret Catley Carlson. I'm on the executive committee of the Tyler Board, of which Owen is our chair. Uh, and we work, and as you've just heard uh, from Donnell, we work in collaboration, administrative and managerial with USC. And this is always a wonderful occasion. And I get to do the really fun part tonight, uh, which is actually to make the introductory speech and to actually cause the event that would happen, which transforms this lady into being our proposed, our named, our nominated laureate into it. You know, the, the, the it girl. She turns into the it girl after this. She actually turns into the laureate. So this is the part for that. So you should eat, Diana. You need, you need the strength. <laughs> um, how's this going to happen? Uh, first of all, I'm going to say some things. Donald's left me a little bit to say. Not much. I mean, he did a really good job there. Um, and then I'm going to introduce a little video on Diana and what this is all about. Uh, by the way, if you didn't see the video in the outer hall, you should pull it up and look at it. It's really good. It's about the 40 years of the Tyler Prize. And then I'm going to ask Diana to come up to the podium, and then we're going to do the medallion, the check, and all the rest of it, and then you will be legitimate. So that's, that's what's actually going to happen. And then Diana gets to speak. So this is why you should eat. You're going to need your strength. Um, so first of all, I get to say some important things about this amazing lady. Um, why did we give the Tyler Prize this year to Diana Wall? Because there's quite a lot of very distinguished persons, scientists, others, who get nominated. And I think Donald's given quite a flavor of it. First of all, she is a very distinguished scientist. She's been the author of 200 papers, and I gave serious consideration to reading the titles of each of the 200 papers, slowly and thoughtfully. And I thought you'd all be thrilled by this, but I thought, maybe not. Uh, so she's um, also been the president of six of major science committees. She's been on every commission committee and conference of note, the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment, all of the national and international tribunals. You know, she absolutely has the bona fides as a first class scientist recognized by her peers through publication and through participation. So that's hugely important. Second reason, she's an amazingly original person. Uh, rather than going where others do not go, she kicked the dirt beneath her feet and then got down and applied a teaspoon to it and then took the teaspoon and put it under a microscope and then was launched into looking at dirt, soil, the sustenance of us all, and this quest took her around the world. Uh, she then went to Others Do Not Go to see what laws and rules would apply to this absolutely essential substance uh, as she went further and further away. Uh, she used the same techniques. We loved the illustration this afternoon that after her team went and did a bunch of things in Antarctica, they went and did the, roughly the same things in Central Park to see if the, uh, the, the hypothesis would actually hold true. Very nice, original, original thinking. Third thing, this came through in all the nomination material. She is generous of spirit and passion and wit. Uh, mentoring was a word that came up a lot. I'll never be 
a scientist, let alone a distinguished scientist, but it must be very tempting just to go on and pursue your knowledge. But Diana has always made sure that she was accompanied, that she was sharing, that other people were sharing in what she was doing, and a lot of the recommendations and a lot of the letters came in talking about the importance and the genuine spirit of her mentoring activities. Um, she also has a great sense of humor. Uh, she put up a picture of a nematode today and said, this is the polar bear of Antarctica. Uh, Diana, but you're going to be getting some money tonight. I think you should hire a good PR firm. There's, there's a long way to go before we can sell that nematode as the polar bear of Antarctica. But, you know, work on it. Work on it. You've, you've, you've got the concept. Uh, so uh, it's going to need some work. That's all. We're, we're all on the campaign. We're all there with you. Uh, and blessed be anybody who says, I'm not here to talk just about global warming. I'm here to talk about global worming. Uh. <laughs> but the fourth reason, and possibly the most important one, is that she's working in a field which is key to all of our survival. Water, air, soil. This is the stuff not just of ecology, this is our prosperity, this is our health, this is our future, this is our planet. And so how much more important could that be? So. Uh, you know all the formal reasons, they're really well written here and you've got all the, all the material there, but uh, those are the kind of, that's what really attracted us to this amazing woman. So I am very pleased, da 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 da, now you come up. So I'm going to read this, then we're going to see a video about you, and then it's all going to happen, okay? You ready for this? Okay. <laughs> Diana Wall, in recognition for world-spanning research and for passionate, innovative communication across generations on the vital components of soil, integrating plant pathology, species invasions, climate controls, hydrological cycle impact, and physical processes into an understanding of biological functions, diversity, and ecosystem services of this foundation element of environmental and human well-being. Well done. <laughs> mm. Okay, can we? <laughs> it's gonna happen, my goodness, yes. individuals have made to the improving the environment. <laughs> it's a tapestry, so it it's, it's a Diana. myriad. Uh, it is a whole collection of uh, disciplines, of people, of fields that make Whoever's in charge of videos, of we need to change this one to the correct one, please. <laughs> it meant a lot to me. Uh, While we are nice doing that, why don't we proceed with actually the presentation. Good. Can we have the lights back up, please? I was totally stunned. This is scientists, not technicians, you know. <laughs> That's what it is, yes. <laughs> okay. First of all, have we made contact with the video person so that we'll find the right one for after the presentation? We could start looking for the light switches. <laughs> there we are. Okay, there's some lights. Okay, good. Right. The words that you just heard on the, on the recognition are engraved on this plaque, so this will be our first, first presentation. But you don't want to hold that, so we'll put it right back down. <laughs> I like this. Yeah. Secondly, Maggie is going to do a job and give you a beautiful gold medallion. Wow, wow. <laughs> this is for getting 10 out of 10. <laughs> well done. Congratulations. Thank you. 
Congratulations. Put a little icing on that cake, a check for $200,000. <laughs> uh, Diana's going to come up and talk to us um, after the video, if she's not too old by the time the video <laughs> comes on. But we'll go back and uh, go a little further along, and then you'll come up and uh, talk. And we'll try and find the video, and if not, we'll just listen to you with great pleasure. Okay. I warned you that I would be back. I'm back. <laughs> we found the video. Uh, we found the cues. And so certainly you're very much invited to go on eating your salad. We'll have the video about this nice, amazing, wonderful, smart scientist to whom we're awarding the Tyler Prize this evening. And then she will come up and she will make her acceptance and speech to and uh, speech of what she's doing. And so, therefore, on with the video, inshallah, which means with any luck at all. Okay. The first time I went to the Antarctic was an amazing feeling for me. I felt like somebody had flown me to Mars, dropped me off. There was no sound. It looked like all the pictures of Mars with the rocks in the soil. When we first went there, our objective was go out and sample a lot of these extremely dry, arid desert soils, take those soil samples, put them in a plastic bag, and take them back and wash the animals away from the soil particles. And when we saw that there were all these tough little nematodes, roundworms, living there, moving around, First time I went to the Antarctica. Deep, and you start thinking, how in the world did they survive? You know, the nine months of brutal winter, and yet this is their ecosystem. By focusing early on the enormous group of animals called nematodes, Diana was able to call attention to these animals and their huge role in ecology and to help people understand how soils differ, how they're really made up, and what complex media soils really are. I think the thing that surprises people most about soil is when they take a handful of it. This is a lot of life that has evolved over time. There are food webs in there, there are interactions going on by the second to transform what we know as things above ground. I think the time for soil is now that we see soil as a center of a lot of the major environmental issues. 20 years ago, we weren't thinking about the hidden life in oceans. Now we're thinking about the hidden life in soils and how that's important to the loss of biodiversity, loss of species or to food security and CO2 release as a driver of greenhouse gases. Diana's work has really informed our global perspective on soil ecology and having worked all over the world in different soil ecosystems. 
she's become a real proponent for promoting biodiversity and also pointing out what the negative impacts of global change can be and other human impacts on the environment. I think as the years go by, 10, 15, 20, 30 years down the road, Diana will be regarded as a pioneer of viewing soils as living systems, of understanding them, of prizing them, and of managing them with ever greater precision. Soil is becoming really important. It's the nexus of a number of policies that have major environmental issues going. One of these is the Framework Convention for Climate Change, which is looking at the balance of carbon in soils, in the atmosphere. The second one is to look at desertification. We're losing land worldwide because of the, our treatment of land. And with that, soil starts to blow, areas become more desertified and more plants can't grow. And another one is just the loss of biodiversity. How can we grow crops if we're destroying the soils, changing the biodiversity in soil, and then we can no longer have fertile soils for our crops? She's really crafted fundamental contributions to understanding the soil ecosystem. She's recognized across the world and, and asked to come and comment on various ecosystem questions. So it, it just seemed to me that she was just a natural for the Tyler Prize. Soils are at the center of a lot of environmental challenges we've got going right now. Soils are complex and with the population increasing as it is, we're going to have more pressure on the world's best soils. So we need to bring them to the discussion table now. She's going to watch me. Okay, thank you very much. Um, as many of you know, this is one of the most exciting uh, types of awards that any scientist can get. And I'm really <laughs> excited to, A, be, have been notified about, about this award, but secondly, to be in the company of so many well-known scientists who are trying to change our world. And I just want to first do a few thank yous. Uh, first of all, to my family, who has supported me in the many Christmases <laughs> that I haven't been there, as every Antarctic person knows. We miss a lot of Christmases. So that's really great to have had their support for this. I also would like to thank uh, my university, Colorado State University, for giving me the freedom to go to Antarctica and do these studies without filling out a whole lot of paperwork every year. <laughs> I, I also want to thank um, a number of people, and I know this may sound like the Oscars, but since the Tyler Prize comes from Antarctica, I can do that. I mean, comes from L LA, I can do that. <laughs> Uh, I'd like to thank Ross Virginia of Dartmouth College. Ross, would you stand up? Uh, Ross and I have been working together for over 30 years in hot deserts and cold deserts, and I really appreciate <laughs> I really appreciate having colleagues like those and like my other colleagues uh, who you may have seen some of us walking around looking so amazed that we're in they're in tuxedos and I'm dressed up. That's really very, very rare. And so to the, to the guys that I work with uh, in Antarctica, all of you, because it's pretty much of a, a tight group, but as Donald said, there's a lot of sharing of knowledge and thinking about ecosystems and how they're changing. So hats off to them and hats off to my colleagues that, that I've just worked with for a number of years. I've learned a lot. And I think we are doing something to change the world. There are a lot of other people I could thank. I'm sure I would miss some of them. But I do want to say that you've seen a video, you've heard a lot, so I don't want to belabor the, the dinner. But I just would like for you to walk away thinking that soils are living and that soils are at the center of a number of international policies that we need to consider when we're starting to manage the planet. And these do include the Framework Convention for Climate Change. They do in, 
include desertification, the transformation of land into deserts. It does include biodiversity, invasive species, species lost, and what's happening below our feet. And I think food security, of course, is number one in what we're going to do in the future. But we also have to think that everything that we see above ground is tied closely to all the living things below ground. So as we move forward, I hope that I can use this Tyler Prize money to help my research, my colleagues' research, not too much, don't get excited. <laughs> <laughs> I can already hear them thinking. Um, but, but I really do think it's gonna make a difference, particularly now as we're all concerned about science budgets. It's just a wonderful, wonderful prize. Thank you very much.